Their wave selection will change, becoming the priority heat along with Kolohe, De Souza, with now 20 and a half to go. Jeremy Flores and David Silva just getting started. 46 minutes all together in your matchup at J-Bay. And the back half is that priority side in this overlapping format, which is still a work in progress. As we go down the line with Jeremy Flores, searing carve into the pocket. Tight wrapping turn, now pulls in under the hood. And this one will just get started for David Silva, the rookie on tour. Oh. Ejecting out of that foam climb attempt. Fresh off the win in Belito, a qualifying series 10,000 rated event. It's funny how that happens, you know, you stay with someone, you surf against them quite often. I had so many hits with Tom Carroll, very few hits with Oki. I think a lot of people that went to Belito for the qualifying series have the advantage of uh, different wetsuits to yeah, use. Oftentimes you see the 4 3, 3 2, booties. To missing the first four events, he's just trying to get back in gear as we look at David Silva. Big hack to float. Blasting it perfectly in the pocket. Another hack off the lip. The Belito champ just jams it shut, keeps his board under his feet for the finish. That'll put him in the lead over Jeremy early in their matchup. Still with 30 minutes to go. Nice, big, powerful snap from David Silva. A little float right there. Nice little tail tapping drop straight into the next one. Watch how he keeps that rail nice and clean all the way through. And then upside, down. Thought he'd lost it, but somehow pulled it back under his feet. A well-deserved 6.5, that's for sure. Look at the power, the amount of water that gets flung through the air is amazing. He's not one of the biggest guys on tour, but really solid. This turn right here, right in the critical section of the wave, gets that little bit of drift, showing the judges a bit of variety, keeping it nice and smooth, which is so important out here at Jeffreys Bay. Stitch it all together nice and clean and finish strong, and that's exactly what he did. 6.5, thank you very much. We'll find out what he's talking about in just a moment. 6.15 to go here. De Souza will wait for a better wave. Flores has some room now. Big snap, he'll kick out. I think there could be a little bit of frustration on his last couple of wipeouts as well. First to start as a rookie, quarter final. He actually had three quarter finals in a row in those early years. Flores setting up his opening turn. Top turn wrap. Power gouge in transition, and he's going to let the rest of that wave go. <laughs> Four four seven. He'll improve on. Flores looking fast down the line, coming off a big wrapping turn. Layback, blow tail on the end section, and he'll throw that one away. We see a replay of David, David Silva drives off the bottom. The backhand is just the weapon, the go-to weapon for David Silva. And uh, this wave just suits his approach down to the ground. On the backhand, it's good to find those ones with a nice pace to them. The, uh, the intention from last year's world title runner-up is much the same to the back half of his 2018 season where he was just going all out. Well, Julian, he's got a... A really tough opponent out here in Ezekiel Lau. The Hawaiian has been doing some great free surfing, but Julian's record speaks for itself. A number of finals appearances. And Jeremy Flores up at the moment. Can't find anything out of this ride. He's been the busiest surfer in the lineup at the moment. That was wave number nine. And the big question mark was uh, 2015, where he made the final with Mick Fanning, and that, that one was incomplete, obviously. We'll get it run one of these days. David Silva up once again. Trying to really apply some pressure to Jeremy Flores here. Great control, falling out of the sky. Just plugging away, staying nice and close to the pocket of the wave. Gets out in front of it a bit, but wants to maintain some speed for a big finish on the inside. And right behind him, Flores will have a chance to lock in a solid number and get himself back in this heat. Just karate kicks the first section. Now setting up the inside, beautiful conditions, really starting to clean up now. 
as Flores accelerates down the line. Trying to stay out in front of this section. Commits to the rail and now lining up the inside with a barrel ride. Locked in and he sneaks out before that wave clamps down. A more complete ride. It'll be his best. We, we see this thing again. A lot of little pumps off the bottom there before that first jab to the lip of the wave. And then a nice little carve out of the top. Classic Jeremy Flores style. Up into the lip again. Wanting to stay tight to the pocket. But sometimes those horizontal turns... I know they don't do it as much as the great big arcs. And here's that inside barrel. Sal pulls in, gets a little travel time, comes out the bottom of it rather than cleanly. So smart in the tube, right? I mean, he's just one of the the, the, the wisest tube riders that I think you have on tour. And right then he said... And, oh, well, we saw during that interview, he picked off a wave. We're going to look at it again now. He let go Ooh. of maybe the best turn that we've seen in the event so far. And one of the better waves too. Nice first turn, second turn, just biding his time. That Ooh. turn was incredible. Sal Masekela, the goofy getting excited next to me. I was excited too. This was unfortunate. The ending was unfortunate, yeah. but two massive turns on that wave. I was grabbing Barton's shoulder. That I, I, was, I think oh. I squeezed the life out of you on this turn. How was that bottom turn, top turn combination? just drove out of the bottom full rail clean beautiful timing and then that drift across the lip was just magic yeah, as far as big uh, assaults go on the pocket of the wave here at j bay that's the best we've seen for a, a big individual move we were talking about what was the best option as jeremy flores gets another opportunity ah beautiful carbs ronnie well jeremy had a, a seven on his previous ride David Silver's just dropped the 693 for that last one. And Jeremy's up again and has an opportunity to get into the lead. He needs a 6.43 out of this wave. Unfortunate ending for Jeremy then. But he really can't afford to slip up at any stage, especially in these earlier rounds as we see Jeremy's right once again. A couple of beautiful carving arcs. Ah, oh, the style and technique of this young Frenchman is so beautiful. Down the end here, this is where you were looking for something spectacular. Got a, got a nice hit, but then got caught up. And you can see that wave just peeling off in front of him. He, he can basically tell you exactly <laughs> how he's feeling, whether he's uh, eggy, whether he's um, fired up, just by watching uh, the way he moves. And, and he's up at the moment. Inside ride has to really absolutely mince this wave if he wants to turn in the big number required. 6.43 is what he's after, rolling through to the inside. And we'll read the body language on the inside. It actually didn't say much at all. You could tell that it, it just didn't have it. But this guy, Sal, has been on a, a magic run. You, you can't teach a backhand like that. It's <laughs> lethal. Lethal, absolutely. Hot off a victory at the QS 10,000 at Bolito. David Silva maintains that role and gets the jump on Jeremy Flores. More action to come from the Corona Open J-Bay right after this.